Good Tuesday morning to you. This is Jessica Linhart, Christian author, minister, and wellness advocate. In today's world, it is very important to know in whom we believe. If you do not know and you're not fully persuaded in what you believe, then it is easy to be led astray, to be led down the wrong path, to be led in the wrong direction. If we're not fully persuaded in whom we believe, then we will not be able to determine false doctrine or false teaching. What is false doctrine? If you have your scripture today, turn to Galatians 1. And let's look at verse 6 and um, let's go to about 10. I happen, ha I happen to have the ES v version on my lap so um remember to go back and compare it to the king james version but galatians 1 6 through 10 reads i am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of christ and are turning to a different gospel not that there is another one but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you, a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. For I am, for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? It's a question. Or am I trying to please man? It's a question. If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So what is false doctrine? or false teaching according to Galatians 1, 6 through 10? Well, it says here that um, anyone that distorts the gospel of Christ, anyone that would turn someone to a different gospel, anyone um, that's teaching something that um, is contrary or the opposite of the word God or not even totally true, um, that that person will be accursed um, according to the scripture here in Galatians 1, um, 6 through 10. If you're preaching something that's contrary to the word of God, that God uh, has sent Jesus, that Jesus preached, um, that we have here in the scripture, if you're teaching something that's against that, then um, you're no servant of Christ. Um, scripture also describes you as a wolf in uh, sheep's clothing. Uh, another reason we need to be rooted or grounded, as people say, in what we believe is because we will not know the difference between the traditions of men and biblical truths. There's many different um, traditions of men that um, are illuminating in, in Christ's church today. There's a lot of traditions that go on that's contrary to the word of God. And you can only know these different biblical truths from actually doing the reading and research and following the Holy Spirit in Scripture. Um, 2 Timothy 2.15, King James Version says, Study to show thyself approved to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Another one of my versions I like to compare King James Bible to is that NASB. If you don't know that acronym, it is the New American Standard Bible. Um, a lot of seminaries teach from this Bible. Um, it has a lot of history in it. 
but it says, be delighted to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. We are to rightly divide the word of God and we are to present it with truth. And when we have traditions of men that um, are followed, that is a false teaching that um, goes right with false doctrine. And if we're a part of an organization that does that, it says that they're all accursed, according to Galatians. They're all accursed for following the traditions of men instead of biblical truths. If there's something going on in your church house today that just doesn't sit right, that's probably the Holy Spirit trying to nudge you into studying on that particular topic and allowing the Holy Spirit to teach you. If you have your scripture, um, I'd like to turn to John now. Um, go to chapter 8, the Holy Spirit. Thank you for leading me to chapter 8. I'm not sure where this is going right now, but we're going to go to chapter 8 in John. Today's biblical bookmark will make it John chapter 8 today. Here in the book of John, I remember the Pharisees that Jesus was teaching the Pharisees and that, uh, that they didn't believe Jesus' words. And as a consequence, I believe here in this scripture that is talking about that they're going to die in their sins because they um, didn't believe in Jesus, didn't believe what he's having to say. If we're following the traditions of men instead of biblical truths, this is what will happen. Let's look down to about 23 and start there. It's in red writing, and it says, He who was saying to them, You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he... You will, die, you will die in your sins. 25. So they were saying to him, Who are you? And Jesus says to them, What have I been saying to you from the beginning? 26. I have many things to speak and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and the things which I heard from him, these I speak to the world. That was red writing. That means Jesus Christ himself said that from the book of John, chapter 8, verses so about 23 to 26 there, if you're taking notes. Um, have you ever been asked, or let's put it this way, have you ever received a knock at the door and the person on the other side seemed to be very enthusiastic and they seemed to know what they're talking about, but what they were actually spewing out of their mouth was false doctrine? The first thing we need to ask a person that wants to talk about doctrine is in whom do you believe? Are you a Pharisee? Do you believe not in Jesus Christ? Because you're wasting your time talking about doctrine if you're not going to talk about Jesus Christ. It all hinges on Jesus Christ. When this happened to me, I was um, in uh, what I call Wally World, if you can read between the lines. And the other day, I was, uh, it's been uh, several months now, not just the other day, but I was involved in a, a food ministry. And um, so uh, people um, kind of come up to me and we uh, meet different people from different churches. But um, they believed in Jesus Christ. But after um, we got to talking, they didn't believe that he was the only way to heaven. Uh, she did, like I said, proclaim Jesus Christ. But as I listened to her speak, she and her, what I would say, cult, uh, believe in helping people and reaching out. And a lot of good things that um, come from scripture. But they were spreading the false doctrine of um, one that Jesus, when he left and went to heaven, there was another that returned 
from um, heaven to uh, fulfill the calling of Jesus. This is a true false doctrine, um, and it's local. They're spreading churches and, and here and there, and I, I know Washington, D.C., and some, some other places. But oftentimes, when we say that we believe in Jesus Christ and him alone, this stops them in their tracks. Um, and you don't waste your time uh, learning false doctrine. And Jesus in, in the scripture um, says that uh, just to spew that out, don't even discuss it. So you, we need to make sure that um, we are not entertaining false doctrine. In Philippians 3.10, it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Um, yes, we, that is what we need to believe. That is the basis of our gospel. The power of Jesus' resurrection. The, in the fellowship of his suffering. His personal relationship. Um, being conformed um, to his death. In, in the forgiveness of our sins. And um, coming up from the our sins and being connected with Jesus and having him be our eternal life and our eternal king. And that's what we need. Uh, according to Ephesians 4.11, God calls good shepherds and gives great teachers. But our understanding doesn't come totally from them. We are to read and to study and to prove ourselves worthy as we just read in scripture. It's not just up to our Christian leaders to evangelize the world. World, God gives us our own ministry and he gives us our commission in scripture to go out and to teach. So my question today is what is your ministry? What has God called you to do today? Um, do you know what else we need? Why do we not need to leave it up to a good shepherd or to a good preacher? Bring it down more on a personal. I, as a mother, I want to appear to other appeal to other parents and grandparents, and just just be aware that your children may love that preacher or that teacher, but um, they are watching us. They are looking up to us. And as good parents, we're also good preachers and we're also good teachers. And we need to give our children good examples. We need to give them something they can live by and something they can die by. And that is scripture. And um, that that's what we need to all be rooted and grounded in. And that's our biblical bookmark for today. Um, one more thing as we're running out of time. One more reason to know in whom we believe is and to know why we believe what we do is just to consider those questions that we often get sometimes don't you get a question like i feel from a friend maybe or a colleague i feel guilty all the time what am i going to do about that you need to have a biblical response to that and not just a personal opinion but a biblical response if you don't know the scripture you can get with um, other um, people that do know the scripture. And I can even show you some devices that you can use to find appropriate scriptures. You just have to contact me and I'd be more than happy to help you become more equipped to handle life's questions. How about that life question that comes up as you have aging parents or um, dying loved ones of some illness? And they have questions that are definitely important about life, but more importantly about death. What's going to happen to them at the end of time? And we need to be able to give an account. That's why we need to prove ourselves worthy is to study scripture. And to be able to count out. To um, lead them in the right direction. And not give them false doctrine. But give them the hope that is needed in those last hours. Remember, as always, I'm uh, here for the people. I'm here to um, spread the message that God gives me for the time. And I have Bible studies written only because the Holy Spirit brought them to my attention and led me to write them. And I would love to give them out as free resources to you. And if you would write me, 
I would be more than happy to mail them to you. If God has given you um, money to bless the ministry, please um, tuck that in for shipping. And my address is 671 Hope Acres Road, Elkview, West Virginia, 25071. You can get me on um, Facebook. Um, you can watch videos on YouTube. You can also email me at christianauthor one at yahoo.com. And until next time, may God richly bless your life and give you life more abundantly with health and wellness. In Jesus' name for today, I pray, amen. And always pray, amen.